eight. Thank you. Seven to eight. Thank you, Brother Adrian. Seven to eight. say a pleasant morning to each and everyone and welcome to this after worship 
Thank God for who he is because he's God, the creator, sustainer, preserver. And we thank God for all God's children who are present here at this time and those who are yet to come. Today, the charismatic group is celebrating its corporate worship. Father Intranali is in another part of the vineyard, so your humble servant is here with the family of Christ today. Our service will take the form of morning prayer, and we give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Our service begins on page 33 of our Book of Common Prayer with a seasonal sentence of Lent. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Spirit of God. So we come before God this morning and we pray our prayer of intent together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with and bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more, has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. And at this time, we turn to page 217. 217. And we share the litany of penitence. We'll all recite. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We have not forgiven others as we desire to be forgiven. We have not forgiven ourselves as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord, and we share. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord. We, 
confess to you, Lord. We confess to you, Lord. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord. Repentance, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. The appointed Psalm, Psalm number 19. Psalm number one nine. Found on page four nine zero. And we will do alternate verses. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the fold. 
By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Together, let the words, words of, of my, my mouth, mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O my Lord and my Redeemer. And my Redeemer. Amen. We'll, this time we'll have our first lesson, the Old Testament reading. Old Testament. Auntie Melda. reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of any that is in the heaven above or is on the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am your Lord, I am the Lord your God, I am a jealous God punishing children for the iniquities of, their, of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth ger generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, <coughs> or your daughter, your male and female slave, your livestock, or the alien residents of your town. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite you to stand as we pray the Benedictus on page 40. Page 40. 
Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Uh, we omit the Gloria this time. Please be seated as we have our second lesson, our second lesson. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our suffrages on page 43, suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and your servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us, Collect for today, the third Sunday of Lent, found on page 164, and we recite it together. Page 164. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts 
which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the colleague for Sunday on page 4-6. Together, O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sequence hymn. Our sequence hymn, hymn 147, 147 when I survey the wondrous cross. Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ, our Savior. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus, 
went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. It's time we sing Spirit of the Living God. And our Sunday school children, our lovely young ones, you are excused at this time. Praise the Lord. Let us pray.
Open our eyes, Lord, to enable us to see the Christ in each other. Open our ears, Lord, that we would not only hear your word, but listen to your word. Open our hearts, Lord, that as we meditate on your word, your word would bring a transition to our lives, a new beginning. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I share some thoughts with you this morning from the Gospel passage of St. John. John chapter 2. And I read from verse 15. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. And my theme this morning is the cleansing of the temple. And I need each and every one to pay specific attention to the temple, the cleansing of the temple. The cleansing of the temple, as stated in John's Gospel, is one of the greatest highlights of Jesus' public ministry. This was so significant that the writers of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all wrote about this significant event in Jesus' life. Luke, in his writings, he stated, this was the first great public act of Jesus' ministry in which Jesus declared, My house shall be a house of prayer. I repeat, My house shall be a house of prayer. But you are making it into a den of robbers. And Matthew in his writings shared the same sentiments. In Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 12, Matthew shared the same sentiments. Mark in his writings stated, is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. A house of prayer for each and every one. All are welcome. And in today's gospel, John in his writings stated, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Take these things out of here. Jesus, Jesus' actions establish the true purpose of the temple. His actions establish the true purpose of the church. It 
stop making my father's house a marketplace. It's very powerful words. Very, very powerful words. And it's words that we need to reflect on. That we must show due honor and respect in God's temple, in God's house. And do not turn it into a fiasco. This story occurred during the Jewish time, or during the time of the Jewish Passover. And this was a very special time in the history of Israel. And the Passover that most of us would know or may know, it's a Jewish holiday celebrating the Hebrews' liberation from slavery in Egypt. And secondly, the passing over of the forces of destruction or the sparing of the firstborn of the Israelites. So in the first instance, God delivered his people the people of Israel from the hands of their persecutors, from the hands of Pharaoh and his people. And Pharaoh was so hard-hearted in those times that God had to lay a heavy hand upon the children of Egypt that every firstborn of the Egyptians died on the night before they were set free. God had to lay a heavy hand upon Pharaoh and his people. And the firstborn of every Israelite, they lived. God smote or struck Egypt so heavily. He smote the land of Egypt to force Pharaoh's hand to deliver his people. And Pharaoh did deliver God's people. And this time, was a very special time, a very sacred time, a time of deliverance, a time to celebrate deliverance. So Jesus went up to Jerusalem during this time, and he went up to the temple. And my dear friends, when one enters a temple, what does one expect to find? What is expected of a temple? What is expected to be seen when one enters a temple? Prayers being said or recited, meditation, worship, Persons expressing faithfulness, gratefulness, and thankfulness to God for what God has done for them. But instead of this, to Jesus' great surprise, he found people selling cattle, selling sheep, selling doves, he found money changers seated at their tables in the Lord's house. Total disrespect, in the Lord's house. And just to have an understanding who these money changers were, they were similar 
to the tax collectors of the day. And they were very dishonest. Very dishonest. They extorted money from their own people. In order for money to be spent in those days, because everything was under Roman control, the Roman coin was exchanged or traded for a Jewish coin called a half shekel. And this was used to enable the Jews to purchase whatever they need. And these money changers who traded these coins, they robbed the Jewish people, they robbed their own people. Very dishonest. They were totally a group of, as we would say in our local parlance, a group of smart men. So I am picturing Jesus' shock and dismay when he saw what was going on in God's house. When he saw what was going on in God's temple. So how is one expected to react when you walk into the house of God and you see this type of action taking place? How, does one, how is one expected to react? What did Jesus do? Jesus to himself indicated it is clean up time. It is clean-up time. So he made a whip of cords and he drove them, all of them, out of the temple. As we would say, every man jack, forgive the language, he drove them out. Down to the sheep and the cattle, they, were, they went pell-mell out of the temple, God's house. He capsized all the coins of the money changers, those smart men, those dishonest men. And he capsized their tables where they sat comfortably robbing God's people. That was going on in God's house. And he drove out him those who were selling their doves. And Luke in chapter 19 stated, in righteous anger, Jesus drove from God's house. Jesus drove from God's temple. Listen to me carefully. Listen to who the temple belongs to. Listen to who the church belongs to. Listen to me carefully. Jesus drove from God's house. He drove from God's temple. Belongs to God. Temple belongs to God. The church belongs to God. Does not belong to me. Does not belong to you. It belongs to God. And that's why we have to treat God's church and God's temple with due honor and with due respect. So Luke stated, in righteous anger, Jesus drove from God's house. He drove up the ungodly. Because they were not there to center their thoughts on God. They were there to satisfy their own selfish and greedy needs. So he drove them out, the greedy, and those who were destroying the temple's true spiritual purpose. 
And this is what the temple is about. This is what the church is about. To develop our spirituality. You all with me? That's what the temple is about and the church is about. So what did Jesus do? Jesus defended the temple. Jesus was in defense of the church. So we have a responsibility. And what Jesus did was very prevalent then as it is today. This third day of March 2024. It's prevalent today. Each and every one of us have a spiritual and moral responsibility to be in defense of God's church. Each and every one of us. To God's word and to God's law. And especially when the church is not serving its true purpose, as what was happening then. When they should be praying, they're selling sheep and cattle in God's house. When they should be thanking God for deliverance, they're selling doves. And they're exchanging money in God's house. Do not make my father's house a marketplace. This serious business. So I share some points with you. Jesus Christ's greatest concern is for holiness and godly sincerity within his church. Within his church, the church is a place of holiness. And why is this? Because the God that we serve is holy. That's the beginning and the end of it. The God that we serve is holy. So John in his writings in chapter 17, in his word he said, sanctify them Sanctify them in the truth, and your word is truth. And Jesus, in his sayings, for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. What is Jesus saying here? That he sanctified himself that they also would be sanctified in truth. Jesus, he died on Calvary's cross to sanctify and to cleanse the church with his precious blood. That's what Jesus did. By the shedding of his blood, so that the church will be holy and without blemish. Now what Jesus did for us on that cross, he suffered and died. His blood was shed for us so that the church would be holy and without blemish. And when you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, Christ gave himself up for the church so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or a wrinkle or anything of the kind so that she, the church is described as she, may be holy and without blemish. Serious business. 
And Luke goes on to say, worship in the church must be in spirit and in truth. For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. The church must be a place, it is dedicated as a place of prayer and a place to commune with God. When you enter the church and when you enter the temple, it's a dedicated place of prayer, a place where you would have communion with God through Christ Jesus. That's why Matthew in his writings in Matthew 21, Matthew said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So Luke goes on to say that Christ will condemn all those who use the church. All who use the church, the gospel, or his kingdom. Listen to me carefully. All who use the church, the gospel, or his kingdom for personal gain. For personal gain, for self-glory, glorifying yourself and only God should be glorified, or for self-promotion. But in the parish of St. Clement, this does not happen. Am I correct? That doesn't happen in this parish at all. Amen? That does not happen. Do answer me, eh? So we need to be very careful as ministers of God. We need to be very careful in ministry. We need to be careful. We need to have sincere love for God. Sincere love for God and God's redemptive purposes. A consuming zeal for the righteous. We need to have that passion. And what is zeal? When I looked up the word zeal, one writer declared, zeal in Christianity is a burning desire to please God, a burning desire to please God, to do God's will. Not our will, but God's will, and to advance God's glory in the world in every possible way. Not selling sheep and goat and cattle and robbing people. That's not God's way. That's not God's way. And being true Christians or believers, this is very intolerable. Very intolerable. How could we have this in the house of God? How could we have this? Is either we allow Christ into the assembly of God to purge out that which is not right, to purge out deceit, to purge out immorality, to purge out secularization, to purge out desecration. And Revelation chapter 2, verse 3 speaks of this. So I've given you homework. When you go home, 
look up Revelation chapter 2, verse 3 in your spare time. You need to have an understanding of God's word. And this speaks about Christ's second coming. It speaks about Jesus' divine judgment, which will cleanse all of his churches with finality. The final cleansing is with the second coming of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. The final cleansing. So as church, we are presently on our Lenten journey. I repeat, as church, we are presently on our Lenten journey. And I'm not speaking about the building of the church. I'm not speaking about St. Clement's Church, the building. I'm not speaking about St. Luke, Golconda Church, the building. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, stated, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your church, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This temple is where the Holy Spirit lives. This spirit is a gift from God. And my question is, what are we, and I'm speaking to myself also, anytime I speak, I look in the mirror, because I am not without fault. What are we doing with God's gift that God has given us? What are we doing? Are we living our lives in a manner that is pleasing to God? So we are on our journey, our Lenten journey. Are we living our lives in a manner that is pleasing to God to enable the Holy Spirit to work in us and to work through us? Or are we stifling the Holy Spirit? Are we stifling the growth of the church physically? and spiritually? Or are we allowing Jesus, whilst we're on our journey, are we allowing Jesus Christ to come in and to cleanse our temple, to cleanse our church from all that is weighing us down while we are on our journey? Are we inviting Christ? into our bodies, which are the temple of the Holy Spirit, into this church that God has blessed us with. Are we inviting him in as we journey? Or are we holding on to the same old things that are weighing us down? Are we going into the resurrection period with those things that are weighing us down? Or are we allowing Jesus Christ to come in and set us free? And who the Son of Man sets free, is free indeed. Jesus can do it for us if we allow him to enable us to live right with God, to love God, and to love our neighbor. See that though the Spirit led me to the book of Malachi, we shall conclude with the book of Malachi, which spoke of the coming messenger. And for those who know Malachi, it's the last book of the Old Testament. The last book of the Old Testament. When you have an opportunity, you must read it. Malachi chapter 3. The 
This is what Malachi said. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He's coming to refine his church. He is like full of soap. And when I saw the word full of soap, I said, well, what is it? I have never heard about that. So I did a little research. And full of soap, it is something like an, an agent, a liquid, used to cleanse and to whiten fabric from all of its impurities. So that's why Malachi in his writing said that he's like a refiner, refiner's fire. to transform us and like full of soap to cleanse us. To remove all that which is not needed in the kingdom of God. All that which is not needed. All of the baggage and the heavy weight. All of the negativity. Full of soap. So Jesus is coming to cleanse us, to restore us, to transform us, to make us clean, to make us white. He will sit as a refiner. He will sit as a purifier of silver. And Malachi went back to the descendants of Levi. Levi who was the third son of Jacob. Levi. The, and that tribe was one of the tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel, giving God a lot of trouble. Giving God a lot of trouble in those days. And God said that he will purify Levi's descendants. He would refine them. He would cleanse them with full of soap. He would refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. When we come before the presence of the Lord to give our gifts and our offerings, we must come before the Lord, before the Lord's presence in righteousness. Let our hearts be right with God. And it is prevalent then as it is today. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a reality. Because the God that we serve changeth not. He's the same God yesterday. He's the same God today. And he's the same God forever. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. At this time, we'll have a little meditation, and I ask Brother Clive to play What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And let us just meditate on God's message. Brother Clive.
trials and temptations Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Can we find a friend so fair? And invite you to stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed on page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The greeting of peace on page 125, form B. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother, and in this case I would say your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we share the sign of peace. Where we are, you can interact with your siblings. Peace and love. Peace and love to the body of Christ. Peace and love, everyone. Peace and love. Our offertory hymn in this time. 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. And then we do the open door. Our offertorium. Our offertory hymn. Hymn 496, 496. And can it be? 496.
Our service continues on page 144, page 144. As our Savior has taught us, so we sing. Agnes Day. receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ with faith and thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. We are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord ever the same, ever merciful. Grant therefore, Lord of grace and love, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, his bodies and souls made clean from every stain of sin. We may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. I invite you at this time to partake of Christ's body and blood and be guided by your usher. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A gentle reminder that as you make your way up to receive communion, you are to pay attention to the orange markers on the floor. They are strategically placed to ensure that we remain sufficiently distanced from one another. You are also reminded that you must sanitize your hands before receiving communion, either by washing your hands in the lobby with soap and water or alternatively, uh, you would receive hand sanitizer. Thank you for your We know that you are unable to be with us at this time, so we invite you to pray with us the prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you. Amen.
young people feel welcomed and valued in St. Clement so that they can grow spiritually and then they can go out into their communities, into their schools and be salt and light of the earth. So thanks again in advance and continue to pray for us. God bless. Amen. Sister Bernadine wishes to share. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. On behalf of the St. Clemens Committee Market, Community Market, the team in prize of Father Jesus Latin, Sister Yvonne de Pisa. Now, this is Miss de Pisa, I think, spoke with you all last week, is part of the team. Mr. Gregory Jones, who is part of the ACMS, and myself, we want to really say thank you for coming out, coming out and um, expressing yourself so beautifully with, um, with all the support, all the love that you have shown yesterday was a bumper for me. It was a bumper. It was a bumper ride. So I want to say thank you. And I want to encourage those who are entrepreneurs, those who are artists, artists, uh, you know, you make your jewelry, you do, you, you know, all this craft, you, you, you're cooking food. When they came yesterday, somebody came yesterday and heard they didn't have food, and they put a big pot of soup and it was gone. You know, so anything that God has blessed you with, God has blessed all of us with different gifts. And with these gifts, we support each other. Someone said, with us one hand, you do a slap, but with two hands, we do a clap. So if we support each other, if we work together, we can build St. Clement's Anglican Church. We can build the Anglican community. We can build St. Madeline. You know, and make this adventure. Once we have the vendors, we will be doing it every week. Everyone is invited to come, register, and take part in this venture. The money that is registered goes towards the paying of the tent and tables, right? What you sell goes to you, right? If you want to make a contribution or a donation, to the church that will not be refused. We are so grateful and we are really thankful. So I want to see more young people get into, be, you know, not just I want to be a this or a that, but that God give us a special gift that most of us don't use, making different things, doing different things, and we want to support each other. All right, so I say, Thank you very much to all who was uh, St. Paul's was a bumper. St. Paul's Anglican Church people, they spread that word like wildfire. So if you are hearing me, St. Paul's, thank you in advance. People came from Santa Cruz to our, our, our event yesterday. Santa Cruz and had tents and, you know, took part. So I want to see more of St. Clement's people doing the same. Right, so thank you very much. Spread the word. We are here. Call us, register, and come and have a day. Thank you very much. This Saturday, we will, yes, we'll definitely put that in mind. This Saturday, because persons has already registered for this Saturday, right? So thank you very much, all of you who were there. Thank you so much. Any further notices? I give God thanks this morning for the charismatic movement, charismatic group, and uh, whose corporate worship is today. And I give God thanks for all the information shared by Sister Shamiso and uh, Sister Bernadine.
I was just surprised, please, to Rose, your vestry is carded for that's elections. Carded for Sunday, the 17th of March, 2024. Kindly uh, check for your names. The list is on the on your way out. It's in the vicinity of the doorway. There's a list. Kindly check for your names. Today, as I saw, reports are to be presented. So I think that information would have to come to the people of God as to how soon this can be done. Right? Seeing that Father Inshanali is in another part of the vineyard. We continue with Right. A lot of tours to share. Bible study. We need to come out as often as humanly possible to share and have an understanding of God's word, God's message, God's scriptures. We have an opportunity every Wednesday at 6 p.m. right at our church hall extension. All are welcome. One hour of Bible study to enable you to grow in faith and to strengthen each and every one spiritually. And we hope that as the Wednesdays, the Wednesdays come along, go along, that we will be strengthened as a body so that we'll be able to experience more and more of Jesus Christ. So every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at our church hall, all are welcome. You can bring a friend, you can bring a neighbor. Just invite someone. And let us just pull up the church hall and let us just listen to the word of God and share God's message. Also, every Monday during Lent, the charismatic group will host their meditation. Meditation and intercessory prayer every Monday at 6 p.m. We are journeying with Jesus. Please come one and come all and let us share this experience every Monday at 6 p.m. And every Friday at 6 p.m. we have Station of the Cross. We are hoping to see a full complement at some point on a Friday. All are welcome. I just want to pause for Brother Marlon. I know he wants to share something with us. Thank you. Go ahead, Brother. Good morning. Thank you, yeah, thank you Deacon. Good morning, parishioners. Um, just very briefly, um, just going back to Vashri elections. So, of course, we all know we have AGM coming up on, on Sunday, March the 17th. So, that's just two weeks from now. So, hopefully, we'll have. Everyone will be here. Um, in terms of preparation steps, so firstly, the list of um, parishioners in good standing, that would have been um, published, and that should be on the notice board. So you can go ahead and look for your name there. If you don't see your name there, then please, you can go ahead and review, um, touch base with the, the parish office if there's anything to clarify, right? Um, in order to try to shorten the, the, the AGM to simplify it, one of the things we'll be doing is we'll be re we will be reading the, all the reports from the vestry and the parish groups will be read during the notice period next week Sunday. So that will be on March 10th. So we'll be doing that in order to try to manage things during the, um, during the AGM. Okay? So I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So our youth prayer breakfast was highlighted where our preacher would be none other than our dear sister, the Shruel Kadagai, God's gift to us. We have to use God's gift in a positive and in a meaningful way. And I thank God for Sister Jewel. And I ask God to prepare her 
as she ministers unto the people of God at the youth ministry prayer breakfast. Choir practice. I came in yesterday evening for 5 p.m. service and voices were singing lustily. But Adriel, Sister Shami, <laughs> the whole team, you know. So I, I want to encourage, because I know we have beautiful voices in the church. I want to encourage persons to come on board. Practice is every Wednesday at 5 p.m. 4.30. All right, correction. Every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. and on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. And we don't just want to see the females in the choir, you know. The males are not exempted. Please, males, come and join the choir. Come and, uh, and support Brother Adriel, you know, and the body of Christ. So we make a joyful noise. Amen? Amen. I remember the days when, when the pews were filled, every pew filled with, with, with choir members. That can come back by God's grace. And there's an open invitation. Our brother is willing to train, to teach, to minister God's word in song. So all are invited. Amen? Right, very quickly, because I have to go to St. Luke's Parish in a short while. St. Luke's Church, sorry. Uh, St. Barnabas Parish extend an invitation to their Palm Sunday concert featuring the Liberty Choral on Sunday, March the 24th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Oh, the venue is at St. Barnabas on the Hill. Palm Sunday concert, St. Barnabas on the Hill, Pleasantville. A contribution of $200. All are welcome. All are welcome. Quickly, moving along. The diocesan policy, baptism as a gateway to Holy Communion. It's now in full effect. Priest and I held a brief meeting with uh, parents and guardians yesterday. We were small in number but we are trying to forge a way forward, and uh, we trust that when we do meet again, that we will be able to disseminate information that could truly help us on the way forward. But for the time being, any child who is five years old or above is eligible for First Communion. So parents and guardians and grandparents all are invited to indicate as with respect to their desire to have their child or children um, receive First Communion. Please communicate to the parish clerk so that the necessary infrastructure could be put in place. Amen? And just quickly, I close off with, I don't want to miss up anything. Every week I'm saying, please include your names or time envelope number when making online payments. Food pantry. Right. Very quickly and very importantly, at our entrance we have uh, the food pantry basket. And our food pantry is in need and we are hoping that as the days go by and the week goes by, you know, all God's loving people will bring in their non-perishable items. You can bring it to church on a Sunday and place it in the pantry basket, or during the week, you can take it to the church office so that those who are in need would receive same. So we are appealing, we are appealing, you know, for members of the body of Christ to come and strengthen the food pantry. It's a ministry. Come and strengthen that ministry because there are God's people who are in need and we need to assist with supplying their needs. Amen? Thank you. From the priestess. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Today I will be assisting in the Rio Claro Parish, that's in faith, at the request of our archdeacon. 
The parish priest presently is on a leave of absence. And during the course of the month, several priests from the South region will be assisting in that parish. So today is Father Inchinali's day, God's day. He spoke about the community market which opened its gates yesterday to welcome everyone. And he's thankful for this program, which benefits one and all. He's thankful for all who came together as the body of Christ, including Father Jesus Latin, who played an integral role, and all other ministries. And he's thankful to the team, you know, who created a space for folks to just come out and enjoy a safe environment on market day. So he salute the initiative, and he thanked God for all that transpired. And he said in his word, to God be the glory. Yours in Christ, Reverend Father Earl Inchinali, priest in charge. Thank you, our recessional hymn. Our recessional hymn, hymn 116, 116, Jesus, who this or Lenten tide. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. You enjoy the rest of the day, your week, and on your Lenten journey. We trust God and let him take lead the way. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for coming each and every one. We have, le we have the Anglican outlook. Take one for yourself. Take one for your neighbor. You know, new month, post month, yes. And take one for the neighbor also. <laughs> Amen. Thanks for coming. Wonderful.